Hey, good Monday evening. Kick back, relax, get comfy. We've got a lot of chatting to do about the sporting world coming up in the next 30 minutes. St. John Flames limp home after a rough two-game outing. Cam Neely could be on the comeback trail. Big bucks in the big sports. And it looks like the Habs, Leafs, and the Calgary Flames are all set to pull the trigger on a major blockbuster deal. That and a whole lot more coming up on Time Out. to work was smooth and hope you had a good weekend. Hope you and your family enjoyed the Santa Claus Parade. Thank you for joining us on, for time out here on TV and Beach. I'm honestly joined by Dave Hanlon. Dave, nice to have you here. How you doing, Jim? Let's get right to it. St. John Flames, uh, tough outing on the road. They really needed a couple of wins back to back. They had to play the Lock Monsters of Lowell and uh, they couldn't come up with a win. So they're not sitting too bad. I mean, it's early in the season. No one wants to push the panic button, but uh, your take on those couple of games down to Lowell. Well, I got to congratulate the guys in Lowell. I mean, for uh, a team first year and they're sitting on top right now they, mm -hmm. they must be just bouncing I mean I know it's uh, it's hard for our flames sure know? I mean we jumped from first we were leading all the way through and then all of a sudden come a bunch of monsters and <laughs> take it away from us now we're sitting five points behind them exactly. I mean, but the good point is we're still in second place so. exactly and I mean it's early in the season I mean when the season started out nobody expected the flames to even be in this position so exactly. we won't push the panic button button just yet exactly. let's talk about the goaltending situation a little bit Jean Sebastian Giger of course gets called up to the parent club in Calgary because Kenny Riggs back is out again and I, you know, if we're going to push a panic button, I think this might be the one if you're a St. John Flames fan, simply right. for the reason that uh, Kenny Ray gets back with his age. He's 34 years old. His back kept him out for three quarters of the season last year. Uh, this could pose a huge blank for the St. John Flames, a big hole to fill, because uh, they had hopes that Jaguar was going to play 65 games this year. And not that you've got tough backup. I mean, you've got Igor Karpenko. You know, which is a well-liked name around oh, yeah, town definitely. after what he did last year. Matt Eisler has been playing, not superb, but he's been playing well. Oh, yeah. What's your take on this whole thing? Is Jaguar coming back? Well, I personally, I'd like to see Jaguar come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, you know, they wanted to play in the whole thing, and, you know, I'd like to see him do that. Um, you can't put it past the guys that we do have down there, though. I mean, uh, Kerpenko, yeah, even though he's called flip-flop, and even though he's let a few go by him, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he does stop the puck. And sure. he, when he does, when he has a good game, he stops it really well. But what a debut for Jaguar. I mean, he goes up, and I mean, he'd been playing so well down here. He goes 30 up there. 30 saves. 38 Man, saves. Or you know, I mean, especially against the back-to-back -back defending Stanley Cup champs. I mean, he goes in and stands on his head against Detroit. And, right. I mean, you know, that's, uh, the boys in Calgary are taking a good look. I mean, he is their goaltender of the future. There's no question about right. that. Oh, but yeah. the one thing is, is that, like we said earlier, St. John fans would love to have him down here for the year to try to take another run at that Calder yeah. Cup. And then Calgary last night, um, well, a couple nights ago, um, playing against... Uh, Anaheim, Anaheim, on Saturday night. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the first goal was scored by Anaheim over on Moss, and then the that rest of the it. game was, you know, I mean, he did well at, uh, at stopping the puck, but sure. the rest of it was kind of, well, you know, okay, well, let's see what else is on. Just couldn't get the offense nope. clicking on that night. Let's talk some NHL. Cam Neely on the comeback trail. If you're a Boston Bruins fan, you're sitting out there saying, wow, this is fantastic news. Bruins are playing well, but I'm sure that they'd love to have their, you know, all-star forward back. I'm glad to see him back. I think it's going to be great for the Bruins. Um, they may actually, <laughs> I shouldn't really say they may actually uh, do something this year. I mean, they did something well last year. Sure. But um, I, I'm sure the Boston fans are really excited to have him back. And I, I think it's going to be a big draw. I think it would, I mean, from a PR standpoint, this is perfect. I oh, mean, yeah. because if you've seen a game at the Fleet Center so far this year, there's been a lot of empty seats, That's and they'd right. love to have Cam back. But the thing is, and I think it was a good move on head coach Pat Burns's point, part, was that he said to Cam, he's been working out privately for the past couple of weeks, seeing if the hip will hold up. But what he said to Cam was, look, you know, I understand you want to come back. We'd love to have you back. But you're not going to play two games, take four off, not right. practice with the team. 
if you're coming back to this team, you're, you're going to be a full-fledged member of this team. That's right. Do you agree with that? Was he a little too harsh on him, or is that a good way to go? Well, I mean, from a coach's point of view, I mean, I've never been a coach for mm -hmm. an NHL team, obviously, but from a coach's point of view, um, I don't too hard. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, maybe he just needed a kick in the butt, and you know, the coach knew that, and he was figuring, okay, well, I'll, I'll tell him this, and we'll see where it goes from there. Um, it's strong, yeah, but. It may exactly be what he needed. Sure. As we know, Pat Burns is a great motivator. Oh, yeah. Fabulous head coach. That's, you know, there's no question sure. about that. Let's chat about this big three-way deal that was rumored. I mean, the rumors been flying out of Calgary, out of Toronto, out of Montreal since the season, long before the season began. Here's how it breaks down, okay? Leaving the Habs would be Jocelyn Thibault, Brian Savage going to Calgary. The Flames would give up Theo Fleury. He would go to Toronto. And from Toronto would go Felix Potvin to La Belle Provence. What do you think of all this now? <clears throat> Little uh, confusing, a little confusing, a little confusing. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it'll definitely uh, benefit um, Toronto and Calgary both. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the Habs go, go um, ahead, say it, Dave. I know you want to say. No, no, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to down your team. No, no, it, I think it'll be good for all three teams. Mm -hmm. Really, I, I really think it will. Yeah. Um, you know, Calgary's going to be gaining a really good uh, player, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Toronto's going to be gaining one of Calgary's best. Sure. And um, yeah, the Habs are going to be giving up a couple of really good guys, but they're also going to be getting a good, you know, good one in return. Well, so. that, that was the rumor. I mean, goaltending has been a problem in Montreal, or yeah. it's been a rumor oh, yeah. mill, I should say, since, uh, you since know, Patrick, Patrick Waugh left, left off yeah. for Colorado. But if you look at it, I mean, yeah, Montreal went on that slide last week where they were shut out back-to-back -back games, but... Theodore and Thibault have not played that bad so far this year. No, no, not at all. And I mean, I can see where they might want Felix, but I don't know. Calgary, I can see they want to get rid of Fleury. He's become like a, a media just nightmare out there right now oh, yeah. because every time he comes off of practice, comes out of the locker room after a game, the word is, are you leaving? When are you leaving? Have you heard anything? What's going on? And that's, I mean, Calgary's playing well, yep. but it's got to be a huge distraction for the team and for everybody involved with it. Well, it's kind of like the, the Toronto Blue Jays. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, after every game, they're going up to uh, the pitchers. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank here. Who are you looking their for? Their star pitcher. Clements. Clements, thank yeah. you, yes. <laughs> Gee, I don't believe I didn't remember that. Um, they're going up to Clements, you know, well, what's the deal for next year? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I don't know. Yeah. And from what I understand right now, it's still, I don't know. I know he's a little upset with the Blue Jays. He's quite upset. Right now. Yeah. Well, let's jump into that. I mean, he's got his own personalized website, which is not unusual for any... Not one for the big stars. Yeah, exactly. They, they feel that this is their best way to be able to let the fans know, instead of being misquoted like they always say they are, whatever the case might be. Clemens has gone on record on his website by saying he hasn't heard from Gordash yet. He's very perturbed that Jose Consenco hasn't heard back from Gordash yet. Jose put up big numbers for them. Clemens put up Cy Young numbers, which I think he's going to grab. Oh, yeah. That award will be handed Definitely. out in a couple of weeks. But you can see his point, or you can see his frustration, oh, I think, yeah. more than anything. Yeah. I mean, do oh, they yeah. sign the Rocket Man and Jose? Do they bring him back, or what's Gordash waiting for here? Well, as far as Jose Canseco goes, um, all, through the, all through the season last year, um, it was up and down. I mean, they were starting to talk about that, you know, the first quarter of the season mm -hmm. last year. You know, will Jose come back next year? Um, you know there was tension between him and the management. Oh, sure. Um, as far as Clements go, that was kind of a shock to me. Um, I thought he was very happy there, and I knew Toronto was very happy with them. Mm -hmm. If Toronto ends up losing Jose or uh, Rocket Roger, He's their it's going to be hard It's going to be hard in the fans. The I mean, they're going to lose people. Well, the Rocket Man is their biggest drawing card right oh, yeah. now. I mean, there's no question about it. From a PR standpoint, it's a huge loss. From a team standpoint, it's a massive loss. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is a guy who you can put out every fifth night or every fourth night if need be, and you can count on a pretty good outing. I mean, if he's not getting a win, he's keeping you in there well, late look, into the innings. You look at the numbers at the Dome. I well, mean, when, when Clements yeah. was on the mound, I mean, there was more people there when Clements was on than there was when the uh, the relievers or the other guys were on there. Exactly. And if they lose them, well, that's even if they end up playing in the Dome next year. You that's know, true. There, there's well, another story yeah. in itself right yeah. there, too. But, um, you know, if they lose them, I think they're going to really, really be hurting. I think that the Jays are just playing their trump card on the so. sky, don't they? Yeah. Trying to scare the boys just, just a little. A bit. Let's stay with baseball, okay? we've. Uh, I always love this time of the year because you get to sit back and you see who's signing for the big box, who's sure. not. Rumor has it, now this is just speculation, of course, that all the big papers are writing about, Bernie Williams. Yo. With the New York Yankees, of course, won the World Series just not even a month ago. Arizona is said to have offered him over $100, $100 million. million. Dollars. Truth? 
seven years. I, I know that you. I know that you can't say whether it's truth or whether it's fiction, whatever the case might be. But uh, what I would you put it past him? Well, what would you think if he signed for a hundred million? Does he got to take his kick at the can? He has to grab it because he doesn't know how long his career is going to be, or should he stay and who be does? loyal? You know, in the, in the big leagues, who does know how long their career is going to be? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at Joe Carter a couple of years ago. He he was the big man. And then, you know, when he left Toronto, his last year in Toronto, he was, he was slumping pretty bad. Exactly. And now you never hear of him again. Mm -hmm. You know, you never hear of him anymore. Not saying Joe's a bad player, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, but, you know, they all drop off and he's pretty close to retirement now. And, yeah. you know, Bernie's probably looking at that, at that uh, standpoint. You know, well, I might as well take a, get the good while the goods are good. You know? Yeah, I suppose he's won, you know, a couple of World Series with the Yankees. Why not? Yeah. Move on to greener pastures, see what he can do for somebody else. Exactly. And I mean, the money is too hard to turn down. I mean, we sit here and we ridicule these guys for signing for this exorbitant amount of dollars. But if you were thrown into a situation, tell me that you wouldn't grab the first thing you could to prick your finger with and say, do you want this signed in blood or what? Yeah, oh, yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Definitely. Definitely. So, I mean, yeah. I guess it goes back to the old saying, you have to walk a mile in my moccasins to understand where I'm coming from. These guys work hard, they train hard. And the only thing that makes me mad about this whole thing is that it becomes harder for you, me, and anybody else watching this show, and their kids well, to, like get, we, like we were to go, to, go to a ball game. I mean, we, yeah. we, made it, we were pertaining to hockey last mm -hmm. week, but I mean, baseball's the same way. They're, they're making it harder for the fans to go. I mean, sure. the ticket price is just going to go up because of the salaries. I mean, for instance, Mo Vaughn. Oh, well, I, that's just... You know, you know, there's no need for him. I mean, what is it? He the he Bosox turned down? offer him a five-year, $60 million yeah. contract. He outright turns, turns his down. nose up, says, yeah. no, forget it, it's not enough cash. Yeah. All of a sudden, the Angels are out of the closet saying, we want to give you a six-year, $72 million contract. And, and he, he says, he, well, let me think about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Mo Vaughn... We knew he wasn't happy where he was. Yeah, but I, I mean, you'd love to have him. I mean, if oh, you're a baseball manager, you're sitting there thinking, you know, this guy, the numbers he puts up every year, his defensive play is outstanding. He's an all-star, has been for the past four seasons. Mm -hmm. Take him. Love to have him. But who can afford him at this point? I mean, with the NBA labor dispute going on right now, and they are under a huge dissolution that they, if they think the fans are just going to come piling back in through the turnstiles it's after all be the this great big mess. baseball when they went on strike. Exactly. I mean, do they honestly think that these people are just going to say, well, no big deal. I'm working for 675 or, you know, 725 an hour, but let these guys make as much as they want and, you know, go on strike and make us lose out when we were a season ticket holder or whatever the case might be. Let these guys just walk all around and do whatever they want. I mean, it becomes a, it's, I don't know, it's just become a very big... It's a money grip. Yeah. And I, I mean, mean it's, it's, especially it's a shame, too, because it's turning away from the fans. Sure. You know, it's, it's really taken away from them. I mean, they're, they're not as excited to go to the games anymore because they know, I mean, okay, this guy's just out making his paycheck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, it ta I think it takes away from the season that Major League Baseball did have. Uh, with, you know, everybody watching McGuire every day, watching Sammy Sosa every day, Cal Ripken, uh, yeah. his streak comes to an end. And, I mean, they had a fabulous season yeah. for the whole way around on a PR standpoint. Now, all of a sudden, you get into the off season, and in some circles, it's called the dirty season yeah. because it's when the fists start flying, uh, you know, the four-letter words are used yeah. on and a the, daily basis. And the ink starts coming out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Spe speaking of Mark McGuire and uh, PR, um, at an auction recently, uh, his first home run ball, mm -hmm. the 98 season that was hit, sold for $17,000. 17. And that was, 17, that was the first one he hit in April. Hit in April. Wow. The 50th ball he hit sold on November 3rd at auction for $46,000. Staggering. Wait, tw wait 20 years and see how much number... Add a couple more yeah. zeros and maybe a one in front of the four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 All right, well... We'll get back to some more chat about sports sure. right after this break. we got Terry Ferguson coming up. He'll join us in the studio to chat some sports as well, so don't go far.
Wayne on the Fun on Fiddlin. Fridays at 9.30 and again Saturday at 6 p.m. on Channel 10 TVNB. This is TVNB, the New Brunswick Channel. And welcome back into time out here on TVMB. Jim Menasee, Dave Hanlon, Terry Ferguson in the studio with us now. Terry, thanks for coming in. A pleasure to be here. No problem. High school basketball is the main name of the game for you, and uh, you guys are tip-off tournaments. were held over the weekend around the province, and we're all getting set for the high school basketball season here in town. Give us a little rundown. Well, from what I heard up in uh, the Moncton area, the three St. John teams, uh, Kennebec Cases Valley High School, St. Malachy's High School and uh, St. John High School went up to play against Riverview, Harrison Trumbull, and the, uh, darn, the, uh, I'm trying to remember. I know what you're thinking of. Harrison Trumbull, Riverview High Riverview, School. Riverview, there, yeah. there we go. Across <laughs> the water, yeah. Across the water. So yeah. it gives you an idea of the provincial cross competition because they're not in their own leagues. Uh, they're playing interleague play that are all exhibition, tip off sure. tournaments to start the year off. So mm -hmm. St. John High School, I believe, went 2-1-1. Uh, beat uh, Moncton, lost to Moncton High, and uh, beat uh, Riverview and Harrison Trumbull. I believe St. Malachy's won a couple up there as well, losing to Moncton High. Mm -hmm. And then KV uh, came out of the weekend with a clean slate, 3 0. Perfect. And they beat Moncton High by 20, I believe. So we got a game coming up this week in the St. John area. KV's playing, uh, uh, sorry, St. John High School is playing St. Malachy's on Wednesday night. So it's a good rivalry, you know, St. John High, St. Max. It'd be interesting to be out there see other people out to see the first game of the season of the Crosstown Rivals. Sure, it's always good when those two teams get together, whether it be uh -huh. on the frozen pond, whether it be <laughs> on the frozen tundra of the football field, or whether it be the hard court of the basketball. A lot of emotion in the games. The kids really come out to play those games in particular. Sure. And, uh, you know, both teams want to win them so bad. And the school spirit's so good. There's good representation from each school from the student bodies. And Absolutely. It lands for, a, you know, a good evening of entertainment. Sure does. Mm -hmm. Any names you can throw at us uh, if somebody's out there following the high school basketball scene? Is there a couple of names that have, people have caught your eye and you think, wow, these guys are probably going to have a pretty good year? Yeah. Uh, Nick Donald up in Moncton High School. Mm -hmm. Nick Donald's a nice player from Moncton. Uh, Jason Say up there as well. They got a good guard tandem there. Uh, Kennebec Cases Valley High School uh, has a Andrew Monroe playing in the middle. And Justin Meyer, a three-point shooter. That name's uh, familiar. That yeah. name I recognize. Justin, I think, uh, had a game last year on uh, TVNB. Uh, St. John High was playing him. He hit uh, five three-pointers in a mm -hmm. game. So Justin can definitely put it up in the air and shoot from the outside for KV. And uh, I believe, I don't know the name, but uh, there was a player that came in from Ontario. Mm -hmm. A six-seven player, I guess he can play. So they really? found that out up in Moncton this weekend. Wow. And then uh, St. Malachy's, of course, has a strong contingent of backcourt players of Josh Logan, uh, Ben Gibbs, uh, Colin Furness, and in the middle up front, uh, Cholton and, and Danny Meyer. So St. Malachy's has a good balance on, a, on, on uh, all fronts. They play a pressure, up-tempo basketball game. So they're going to be an exciting team to watch. A lot of points when St. Malachy's plays. They like to get the game going. So. No question. And then St. John High School uh, defending... Uh, going to the Aiken Center last year, losing out to Fredericton. Tough know, loss, we tough might loss. add. Yeah, yeah, real tough loss. And St. John High has, uh, you know, a few spots they need to fill, and Mike Kirsten and Doug Jamer playing up with Clint Hamilton and UMB Fredericton. That's right. That's uh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah, they're doing a fantastic job. Mike's had a, you know, good start to the season. Uh, mm -hmm. He played one game on uh, Saturday, last Saturday, up in Fredericton, uh, and uh, came away with like 12 points in the game and a few rebounds in a rookie year. And Fabulous. And Jamer's seen spot duty but he's getting on so it's nice to see out of the St. John area like Mike King from St. Malachy's High School is playing at UMB Fredericton as well so very familiar name yeah so yeah. we got three players in St. John itself out of the you know the local area and the talent so it's you know it's, it's really good to see the players make it in Fredericton and Clint Hamilton it's great to see him have all New Brunswickers on the team up there to replace St. John High School's Jamer and Kirsten it's you know it's a tough role I mean mm -hmm. these two players went to university but Kurt McAlpine's a very talented player he's earmarked for potential to be a university ball player and there's Mike Price in the middle and from my understanding with St. Uh, St. John High School it's it's their guard play they're good and strong in the front court and, you know how well are they going to be able to play in the back court get sure. the ball up against pressure because St. Malachy sure likes to play the pressure game so no question yeah I'm going to put you on the hot seat for a minute who's your pick to win this this year well, I know you don't like to take one this early <laughs> in the season, and it's tough because, like you said, there is so there is so much talent out there. Yeah. But if you had a choice to sit here right now, let's say you got a pro line ticket in front of you, who would you pick? <laughs> I would say it's going to be between three teams. Okay. Okay. I'm going to split it here on you, <laughs> and I think that uh, 
uh, or four teams. St. Malachy's, I think, is looking good. KV started the the the, uh, the weekend off the well, but it's only the start of the season. But how sure. good is this gentleman who's six seven? I don't know his name, but we'll find out. And uh, of course, Fredericton. Mm -hmm. Fredericton went away Can to never Halifax. count them up. Fredericton went away to Halifax. Gary Young, quality coach up there with George Doak, and mm -hmm. they went off to Halifax to play the Queen Elizabeth High Schools and the Halifax Wests, and and came away, you know, three and zero on the weekend. So. They went down to play good, stiff, heavy competition in the Halifax area. So I mean, I think that they're the nod. They, they're, you know, they won it last year. So I would say the Fredericton is the front runner. I think KV Moncton High mm -hmm. uh, early in the season, of course, Moncton lost by uh, 20 to KV. So sure. I think those four teams and St. John High School, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, the season's early. It depends on how far you develop. Because injuries. Injuries are always a big question. Injuries, and, and, and all you have to do is make it to the dance at the end of the year. There's eight That's teams it. around the province, and number four has beat number one before on several different occasions. So mm -hmm. it's all a matter of where you are and how you progress as the year goes on. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to well, see. Well, we've got you on tape. As soon as the dance gets ready to start, we'll have you back in, and we'll, we'll see how your picks held up. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for <laughs> Let's talk NHL hockey for a little bit. I know you're a big NHL hockey fan. Uh, what did you think about this big rumor trade that was going on with, uh, between Montreal, the Leafs, and uh, Calgary? Theo Fleury on his way to Toronto, uh, Brian Savage, Jocelyn Thibault on their way out to Calgary, and Felix the Cat on his way to La Belle Provence. Ooh, I'm a Habs fan, so. Good. Uh, well, geez, I'm glad <laughs> we I'm not afraid. Well, I'm, I'm, not afraid I'm not afraid to admit that. <laughs> but uh, now I'd like to see, uh, you know, some type of a trade in Montreal, because I think the pressure on those goaltenders is just, it's, it's extreme. Oh, it's and huge. And fan. You're used to pressure. Mm -hmm. He just wants a place to play every day. And Cujo's the number one guy. Uh, I think Toronto's got an excellent opportunity with Fleury, even though he's a, a seasoned player. He's not necessarily at the end of his career. I think off to a good start so far. Off to a great start this year. But it's a contract year for him. So sure. Toronto has to basically, if they're going to give up that much, uh, they're going to have to sign him. Oh, no and question. They have the money to do it, and they seem to have the deep pocket. So mm -hmm. uh, Calgary, on the other hand, getting uh, Tebow. And Savage? Hmm. I like Savage. I think Savage is a goal scorer. Well, I mean, but look is he a good fit for Calgary? I think Calgary, mm, myself, uh, I think uh, Montreal is going to gain a lot with Podfan. Mm -hmm. That's just my personal opinion. Well, David, I think you'll agree with this, that uh, Brian Savage's game has uplifted since this, oh, oh, since yeah. this rumor has begun. But you look at Jocelyn Thibault going to Calgary. Now, I sort of understand this looking from Calgary's perspective, but I sort of don't understand it as well, seeing that the the talent of goaltending they have right now, do they want to throw another mix into here and start another rumbling like when Rolison was here and, and uh, Rick Tabarachi was still here and they, they had all these flooded goaltenders? Do they like want to be trying to throw too many cooks in the kitchen? Sure. Do they want to start this all over again? I don't think they want to. I think it's a matter of, well, I wouldn't really say need right now either. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, up in Calgary, their, their goaltending just isn't up to par. Mm -hmm. It's not up to snuff this year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, 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 like any other team, they, they want to win. So I think so they're just they're looking, throw, they're looking for a little more mixing. seasoning. Yeah, I think you know, so. I mean, if I'm Sutter or if I'm Al Coates, I'm worried about Kenny Reggett. And I'm worried about that back because I don't think it's going to hold up. Yeah. Now, that's just my personal I mean, opinion. Second time, mm -hmm. second time this season. But, right. I mean, do you think this guy, like, I mean, he was out three quarters of the season last year because yeah. of his back. Yeah. He's an older player. Sure. Uh, you don't like to give up on older players because you can't, you, it's hard to replace that many years of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I think Tebow, un, out of the pressure, maybe in Calgary, you know Calgary's is still a, in a rebuilding situation if they're talking about Flurry. Sure. And they obviously don't have the money to, to pay Flurry, so they're going to ship him off if this deal ends up going through. And mm -hmm. I, I really think that Tebow's still only a young goalie. Sure. He still has a lot to learn. He oh, learned some absolutely. from Andy Moog. Mm -hmm. It's just the pressure. I mean, it's not the goaltender's fault in Montreal. They scored, uh, what, one goal in three games? Yeah, it was pretty bad. So yeah, pretty you can't bad. really blame that on no. the, the goalies. I mean, Koi who's so. being out uh, doesn't help their situation. But I think the urge of uh, when Montreal was playing and they, they got beat really bad and mm -hmm. the fans started chatting, uh, pot fan in the crowd, uh, kind of like sending the message at the city saying, we want pot fans. So yeah. Yeah. it sounds like they're going to go do it. It looks that way. We don't yeah. have much time left. Um, one thing I want to mention is uh, the fact that Sammy Hellenus, back with Calgary. Yes, he was. Hellenus. Hellenus. Is, is how Mark Crawford Hellenus, refer, yes. referred to him on Saturday night. <laughs> exactly. Sammy Hellenus in the lineup for the Calgary Flames tonight. <laughs>
Terry, I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, it's, it's been great. an extreme pleasure. We'll have you back because, like I said, we're holding you to those picks. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks for coming in. Dave, it's always a pleasure as well. And thank you to you for tuning in tonight, and we hope to see you again next Monday night, 6 o'clock, for Time Out, right here on TVNB.